Hello. Today we're going to talk about displaying the results of your PDO query. So uh, I'm going to start off with a little bit of just uh, some syntax so you can see kind of what, what we're going to be doing. There's a couple general approaches to this. I'm going to show you both of them. I always had the tendency to uh, compare things to MySQLi because that's what I learned in first. So in MySQLi, we fetch a fetch array, fetch ASOC. There was different ways that we could fetch those results. The same is true in PDO. So we can fetch ASOC, fetch num, or fetch both. I don't know. I don't know that you would ever want to do both. I like ASOC, but num's fine too. I'll show you what these things mean. So, anyways, there's two ways you can fetch your results. One is using the uh, fetch method. Fetch is going to grab one row at a time, and then there's fetch all. And fetch all is going to return a big array of all your results. So uh, I think they're actually pretty darn similar. So let's stop talking about it and let's do it. All right, so here's my query. It's on this table called hitters that I've been working with in my last few videos. Um, I guess it's worth showing it to you just in the event that you haven't seen it before. Not this one. It's called hitters. So it's got a bunch of uh, baseball players in it. The field names are all uppercase. The name of the table is lowercase. There's my connect script. I've, I'm doing a prepared statement here. I've bound and executed my parameters. Let's use them. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, print this out. So it, uh, but, I, but first I need to get it. So I like to call this variable row. And so let's just fetch one row at a time. So that's going to be result, right? That's that thing we got from our query. And we'll say fetch. Now, there were different ways you could fetch, like fetch ASOC, fetch num, fetch both. Let's just do a fetch and see what we get out of that. Now, that's not a particularly printable thing. And what I mean by that is you can try and print that out, but it's not going to go very well. And I'll show you what I mean. You get array to string conversion. So that tells you that thing you're trying to print out, to print out is actually uh, a, an array. So we actually got to do some things here. I am going to take my results and I'm going to, well, no, 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 I won't do that yet. Let, let me go, uh, let me, let's just skip a step, say print underscore R. Print underscore R is the tool for printing an array. So we can see what we get. All right, so it looks like that. We got something, it's a mess. So let's make that look less messy. By less messy, what I mean is wrapping that thing in pre-tags. These are HTML tags. You might or might not be familiar with them. Basically, they uh, they make it so line breaks don't get ignored, which generally we don't actually care about, but here we do. See, when I do that, it's like, oh, okay, I can see what's happening. And so do you see how it's a uh, name is Lance Berkman, zero is Lance Berkman, pose is 1B, 1 is 1B. That is both. So what we just learned was the default here, if you don't pass this thing anything, is it's going to give you both. And both is wasteful. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So PDO colon colon fetch both. I'm telling you that option that you can specify is going to make no difference because that's the default. It's wasteful. It literally gives you twice as much stuff as you need. Uh, if you make that fetch num, you're going to get what you would call an indexed array. Right? More efficient. But it, uh, I don't love that because you got to know the numbers of the fields. And that's why I pretty much always use fetch ASOC. Because in an associative array, the keys provide some meaning into the values like that. Right? Could you do both or could specify nothing? Certainly, but it's not exactly efficient. All right, so if you're excited about this, you need to uh, be less excited because it's not that good. That good. This is not a legitimate way to display your results. This is just debugging technique, so you can see if your query is doing anything. If you want to make these uh, results legitimate in terms of well-formatted, the way I would handle this right here is I would make a while loop. So a while loop runs until this condition evaluates to false. Now the interesting thing is this conditional statement here is going to be an assignment. Specifically, it's going to be that. We know that this fetches a row. You know it does because you saw it just do it. So I'm going to take that, and that's going to become my condition. Now it's weird to see an assignment as a condition, but that's what we're doing here. So I'm declaring a variable called row, and I'm assigning it a value of whatever the current row is. So if there's 20 results, first time through, it's going to give me result 0, then 1, then 2, then 3, then 4, then 19. And then at a point where it runs out of uh, results, this is going to be false. 
That'll get assigned false. This condition will evaluate to false, and it'll bail out of the loop. It's, if you've never seen me do this before, you've never done it before, it's weird looking, but it's a pretty cool solution. And then in here is where we're going to echo out the actual information. So let's say I want to echo out the player's name and a line break. This won't go well, so don't get too excited. So row is just like a, it's the row. And in that row, I only want to shoot out the name. I don't want just the whole row. I can't really do that. You're not allowed to do that. What you can do is shoot out. You can echo out a string, which is part of that row. Let me show you the underlying table again. So I'm shooting out that. This doesn't work. I know it doesn't work. I hope you know it doesn't work. If you don't know it doesn't work, you're going to see it doesn't work. Encaps, white string, space. So basically, you're not allowed to index into an array inside of an echo like this. But what you can do is wrap that thing in curly braces. So anytime you're indexing into an array, just wrap it in curly braces, and that clears that up. Just to make this a little weirder, let's say that I also want to go uh, hyphen and then also display their position. I don't typically I don't do the curly braces later. I do them early. I do them I do them right away just to define the shape of the uh, query or the results. So let's just say I'm doing name and then hyphen position just to show you what a little more complicated uh, print would look like. If you were actually going to do this, these things would probably be tables with rows and columns or divs or something, but Generally speaking, you display your results in a table. I'm not trying to make a table out of your results. I certainly do have a video on making your dynamic results into a table, and you should watch that if you're interested, but I'm not trying to do that here. So this is one approach to the problem. Um, so fetch one row at a time and have that be the conditional statement in your while loop. That's fine. I, uh, I do it like that a lot. But let me show you the other kind of way you can do it. So I'm commenting that out because I don't actually want to do it come down here. I want to do this again just so we can learn more about things. So the other way of fetching your result, um, I'm also going to comment that out because that's kind of irrelevant. It's similar. So let's just pretend I haven't fetched anything. I'm back at the stage where I just did my execute. So I'm going to create a variable called row and I'm going to call it rows because I know that I'm going to fetch a whole set of them at once as opposed to just one. Why would I do that? Well, I guess because I can, if that's a good enough answer for you. Sometimes I do it one way, sometimes I do it the other. It kind of depends on the context. But it's just fetch all. And it works the same. If you don't pass it anything, it's going to give you that both. Um, but I'm going to do the old thing I like to do, which is pdo colon colon fetch both. Or sorry, I didn't say both. I mean, both the default. I don't know why you would ever write that. I meant ASOC. And so, oh yeah, that's not a loop, or I don't know what I was doing. So this right here would uh, fetch all the results and put them in something called rows. And I guess I'm going to take this print statement, or debugging print statement, and I'm going to print it out down here and show you what I get. That's all I'm trying to do here. Try to clean up this white space so you can see things better. All right, so I'm saying I'm just fetching them different. I'm fetching the entire set as opposed to one row. Let me show you what that looks like. Well, I guess it looks like that because of that. Um, so you see, there's all my results, which is kind of cool, but it's an array of arrays. That's If that's hard to wrap your mind around, well, good. That means your mind is functioning correctly because it is. I mean, you can get arrays full of arrays full of arrays full of arrays. And that's actually a very real thing when you start getting into like a JSON, but uh, not trying to talk about that right now. All right, so here's what we got. So this whole thing of picking through the results one at a time, this is not going to work. This was this thing that we were picking on was a, like a SQL resource. Here we've got the, an array that we're going to iterate over. And if you want to iterate over an array, I recommend using a for each loop. And so how this syntax goes is name of the uh, array that you're iterating over, which is rows, as val. And so this is a weird one. All right, so let me tell you what. It, so there's keys and there's values. This is the first key. This is the first value. This is the second key. This is the second value. This is the third key. This is the third value. Those keys are worthless. The value is the actual row, but it's an array, and you can't really do anything with that straight away. I'll show you what I mean. How about I 
Nah, I was going to try and do something lazy, but I won't. This video is almost done, don't worry. If you're worried about time, if you're just loving it, well, sorry, it's going to end. I kind of doubt that's the case, though. All right, so let's do uh, Val. Let's say I want to print out Val or something like this. Well, I don't even know what I'm doing because I know this isn't going to work. Let me just tell you. Let me skip the step where I illustrate that it doesn't work. Val is just a reference to an array. You can't print that out. What you can't print out is a field in that array, like name. So Val is the row. Name is the field. That right there should work. Oh, well, it's going to be down below here, which is weird. And you see, it worked. If you wanted to make this like the last example, and I kind of do, I'll shape out the query. So hyphen, and then position. So I'll put that in. I know position is going to be referenced to an array, so I wrap it in curly braces. I'll say val, and position, like that. And now, well, let me get rid of this too. And now you'll see that I did this something. I don't know. You can't just cut things like that and expect that to go well. That is missing. And you see, so this right here and this right here achieve the same thing. So at this point, you might be wondering, why would you use one or the other? Well, it might depend. There might be a reason you need to use one or the other. But if it's just up to you, it probably doesn't matter much. I mean, this is a three-liner, including my uh, curly braces. This is a three-liner, including my curly braces. This is a one-liner. This is a one-liner. But those are two different ways that you can fetch results. One being grab the results one at a time. One being grab them all and iterate over them. And right? it's two similar approaches to similar data, to the same data. All right, so hopefully that helps you to understand how to work with those results. Thanks for watching.